great minds have posited and science has proved that I was born and maintain absolutely no sense of direction. I couldn't find my way out of a paper bag, let alone tell you why I was in a paper bag in the first place. It's not as glamorous as it sounds, however, because at the age of 44, I'm utterly reliant on having a computer in my car, a GPS unit, to tell me when and where to turn, wherever I go. And lately, it's gotten so bad that I have to print out the map from the internet to supplement the GPS because there's a credibility issue growing between me and my GPS unit. And just a few words on that and then you know, we'll get down to business. And, and here's the deal. My GPS will tell me to make turns that involve crossing multiple lanes at the last minute to the point I look like I'm something out of a 70's cop show. All right? and, then, and then when I miss it, I don't know what yours is like, but most GPS units do this, this nice voice recalculating. Um, I'm going to find you, you know, a, a better path now. Mine, when I, when, I, when I miss a turn, mine snickers. <laughs> and it's not laughing with me, it's laughing at me. And then, and here's the most insidious, and this is why I share it with you today, because it does have something to do with our scripture, is when I really need to get someplace, and it's important, and I've never been there before, and I'm completely without any sense of direction, I'll turn on the GPS and I'll say, acquiring satellite, acquiring satellite, acquiring satellite. You're in wait mode. I don't know. It's probably just mine that does this. Acquiring satellite. And, and, and the thing is, it isn't acquiring a satellite. It's seeing how long I can go before I break into tears. <laughs> and, and not to personalize this thing, but I just start driving. And I start driving blindly and hope that someday that satellite uh, will pop in. The Israelites wandered blindly into nowhere time and again into the wilderness the wilderness of slavery in Egypt the wilderness of crossing the desert the wilderness of coming into the promised land only to have it snatched out of their hands and be put into exile losing not only their home, but possibly any sense of certainty that they would ever find a home, that God would ever provide them a home. It's easy to say, well, that was the circumstances of the time, the social, political situation, and here were these poor people, and they were victims of their circumstances. But for us to read the Bible that way doesn't allow us to learn from what they were going through. The Israelites' biggest problem was that they were human beings. They had appetites. They had desires. They had attachments. They had emotions. And rather than rely on something bigger than themselves, they reacted in moments of panic, in moments of want, in moments of desire. And it went poorly for them, time and time again. Here were a people who, as I think we continue to do, sought guidance from gods they created themselves. They didn't get much guidance from these gods, of course, but they also had leaders appointed to them. So let's look at Abraham, for example, or, or Moses. And they would follow for a while until you know, they started to doubt them. And they would turn. 
Again, they would turn away from the leadership. And the leadership itself. The problem with the leadership is, it was human beings. Then, and I think the craziest moment in the Old Testament is when the Israelites looked to their neighbors in other countries and they said, do you know what we're missing? Everybody else has a king. And we don't have a king. If we had a king, all would be well. Well, the Bible tells us that God said that would be a very bad idea. I'm just going to tell you up front, it's going to be a bad idea. I'm telling you now, so I don't have to say I told you so later. And certainly God gave them a king, and that God was Saul, who was truly a mixed blessing. I mean, things really went poorly with Saul. And then, if you go through your Bible, and do this this afternoon and with, a, with a big book of paper, and, and just trace the, the kings of the uh, United Kingdom, so uh, Saul, David, Solomon, and then how they branched out after the split into the northern and southern kingdoms and the myriad kings that they had throughout there. And you'll see the same pattern keeps repeating. The, the king would either acknowledge God or turn away from God. The people would either acknowledge God or turn away from God. I mean, they were a mercurial folk, just as we are. This is the beauty of the Bible. We're reading about ourselves. Every time a king turned from God's leadership, it hurt the nation. And every time the nation was hurt, the individuals were hurt.